I remembered I had my own little 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 school mask thing. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Now I now I'm properly representing myself in the game. <laughs> I do kind of envy uh, my character not having to eat because I am so used to getting through leftovers before doing any more shopping. Uh, like if I if I finish off my lunch meat before my sliced cheeses, and I'm by the time I finish everything else and do another shopping run, uh, my cheese get moldy. Is very saddening. I really hate when I waste food like that. Intense debates ensue as freelance engineer unveils custom designed combat robots with extensive weapon attachments. No. No! You're supposed to build robots for space exploration, not combat robots. Fuck! Damn military, military industrial complex claims another victim. Those bastards. Damages from fracking deemed to be too excessive and expensive. Government vows to shift towards developing better renewable energy sources. That's good. Poacher mauled to death by a pack of mountain cats in a seeming act of revenge. Fuck yeah. Get fucked, Poacher. The physical fitness of children improving with each year. Alright, that's good. City budget experiences unexpected surplus. Polit politicians baffled. I'm trying to think of who might have contributed to that. Scientists discover new strain of super tuberculosis. Oh, oh no. Oh, that's not good. Dormant plague bacteria discovered in permafrost, waiting to be released. Yeah, yeah, I think that's actually true. You know, there's a lot of old diseases that still exist, like, frozen in, uh, frozen in ice. Which is another reason why it's really concerning that all that ice is melting. Also, all the carbon that's locked away. Or, was it carbon? I think it was carbon. Read our new article on the post-humanist perspectives for the future. Okay. Congratulations, Grim. You passed the performance review, as expected. But let us not dwell on the past. I need you to focus on the future. So be a tough day. Be attentive. Six have to die. Three with a scientific background have to die. Two, thirty, or younger have to die. Humans are so easily corrupted. Good reaping, fate. So easily corrupted? That's a weird thing to say. Alright, six out of two, four, six, eight. Alright, okay, so two lives, theoretically. Vigilante. Urban ranks. I lurk in the night, searching for bloodsuckers. Irvin has said to the authorities many times, they claim to be a vampire hunter, safeguarding humanity against the terrors of the night. But are vampires truly out there? The answer might surprise you. It's no. Huh. I feel like we need some different tunes. Um, that's no music. Ah, thank you for the head pats, Madeline. Ivar's Birds, game developer. Ivar's is a futuristic, animal-friendly vegan and an adrenaline junkie on the road. They spend every minute working to be the best they can be by studying, exercising, and working hard. Ivar's lives a life like it's the only one they have, which is accurate. Yeah. Um Adrenaline Junkie on the Road. I don't like that. 
but they are living their best life. So, I think they're doing pretty good. Actually, you know what, let's try something. Let's, let's try assessing these as they come, rather than doing a totality. So, Irvin, I'm fucking, uh, vampire hunter extraordinaire. That's kind of weird, but I guess we'll let you live. Jewel Gray, biochemist. Jewel was born on the countryside, but moved to the big city to go to university. They like rock concerts and bars, although their visits have fallen due to having substance abuse issues in the past. They're trying to find a cure for chicken flu. Ooh. Ooh, that's good. Holland Negan. Burglar! Okay, starting off strong. Once during a routine burglary, Holland got attacked by a kid who was unintentionally left behind by their vacationing family. <laughs> this occurrence made them appreciate the quiet days far more. Usually they leave a clean house behind, sometimes even doing the dishes. So wait, are they rot are they still robbing places? But like, hey, I stole your TV. But I noticed you uh, had a full dishwasher, so I went ahead and unloaded the dishes for you and washed the ones in uh, the sink to put in the dishwasher and started the next load. Um, also, your laundry, I went ahead and folded it. I wasn't too sure, you know, uh, where you put your pants and your shirts. Um, so I just kind of left them all uh, on your bed to put away, but you know, the, the hard work's mostly done. Um, if they were stealing because, you know, they're hungry, that's one thing, but just general burglary because the burgling, mm, nah. Nah, bro. Uh, oh, and I got some of my... <sighs> I think it's the, uh... The, uh, Thin Mints. The, uh... It's been some... Girl Scouts setting up a little cookie stand on Fridays, and it has not been good for me holding back on sweets. Because it's like, well, the Thin Mints are right there. I can, I can just get one box of Thin Mints, right? Just, just one. Maybe two. You know, they gotta last a week. And then I just fucking inhale them in, like, a couple hours. <laughs> Euro Bancol, archaeologist. Giro is currently organizing an excavation in the colder regions, digging up some permafrost in the hopes of finding artifacts from the fabled age of the colossal hamsters. What? The age of colossal hamsters. What the fuck? Hold on. Dang it. They went offline. You know what? I'm still going to... How is their, how is their handle spelled? Make sure I copy and paste correctly. If you want to see a giant hamster, small bonker, they are they are an excellent bean. He's just a little guy. If you ever see him, um, ask to munch on his candy corn ears. Um, he, he is a giving person and will give you his delicious, delicious candy corn ears. 
But that, that's who I think of when it comes to the fabled age of colossal hamsters. <laughs> um, but the problem is digging in permafrost there's the super bacteria virus so we need to save the world from further devastation Satiro Abe microbiologist Sitaro is a grad student at a microbiology lab where their research is focused on studying tuberculosis. All right, all right. They edit the ter tuberculosis genome to see how the changes affect the bacteria. Sitaro dreams of working in a facility that has proper ventilation unlike their current lab. Oh, this is a difficult decision. Oh, fuck, this could go bad either way. Because this could be like, I lit, I make him live. He gets infected with super tuberculosis because of the lack of ventilation and spreads it outside the lab. No! No, 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 I didn't. Oh. I hope that's the right decision. This is what I get for just trying to fuck around. I get to find out. What I was going to say is if we hit die, maybe he dies in the facility because of the lack of ventilation and then they improve their um, lab stuff. But no, no, I cannot. Unfortunately, a uh, oversight to this job is they give me permanent marker. <laughs> there is no pencil. So, um, I'm sure this will be fine. He grits his teeth saying, Eli Logan, grave robber. Oh, lovely. When people started burying their loved ones together with their valuables, Eli started digging. The belief that possessions could somehow be taken to the afterlife seems very silly to Eli. They call themselves a tomb diver. I feel like there's a couple aspects to this. Like, there is the respecting someone's wishes um, who has passed. But there is an asterisk where it's like, hey, you're dead. People alive can kind of still use some of that stuff, and they're not dead. But there's also, like, some of its inherent mercantilism, capitalism, like, hey, getting buried with my gold ring is no big deal if, like, gold isn't a currency. Like, what's the fucking point? But it's also, like... <clears throat> There's only so many resources. And, like, if everyone's buried with a gold ring, over a long enough period of time, there will be no more gold. That's just a weird example running with things off the top of my head, but... I think, I think I'm gonna go with Liv. Keep on Indiana Jones and my dude. Natsumi Okazaki, construction overseer slash aspiring architect. All right. Construction, it's the lifeblood of any advanced civilization. Mm. Huh. High rises strewn across the horizon. Truly a glorious sight, but we can do better. That's what Natsumi thinks, at least. Lately, they've started researching more ecologically sound architecture, what some might call arcologies. Ooh. This is complicated. So, it's... Certainly a more efficient use of space. If the skyscrapers are designed to have, like, <clears throat> greenery on them, or botanical 
aquaponics or what have you, you know, your your ceiling farms kind of thing, but like you don't need to be that dense if you have appropriate structures. Like places don't have to be mega cities like New York or um, LA or Houston or whatever fucking over urbanized suburban hellscapes be. Um, like maybe there's there's still a need and a desire for giant skyscrapers, but like infrastructure mega projects in general are more vanity and destructive than they are productive. Like it's more like this is this is putting a band-aid on the problem, but it's not solving the root of the problem that is why, like, these skyscrapers are going up. Um, I feel like solving that root would be, like, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, it would be much better to be trying to solve the root of the problem, but on the other hand, like, you shouldn't poo-poo improving things? I don't know. I feel, I, I feel like I'm gonna land more on, like, no makeup projects. Um. Mm. All right. We'll see how this pans out. E boss. Oop, cloud. Yes, you did it, Reaper. You have achieved. Your grandeur grows with every passing moment. Achieved. What? Soon we'll be but mere moats beside your blazing glory. Are you rambling on now? Nothing. I wouldn't dare say a thing. Your Majesty. Carry forth your deed of darkness, Reaper. But stop before it's too late. Already getting a bit late as we speak. The dusk nears. Huh. Actually, hold on. I don't I don't want the mask all over my face. Let's just Let's let's put it on one of my feathers. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. It's kind of bugging me that it was actually covering up my eyes. I should I should make one and like make the eyes transparent. So I mean, if I wanted to be super extra, I would make one that's a like a, a live two D item. So like, cause like right now when I turn my face, you know, it's just static, so it's kind of weird. But if I made it as like an actual live two D item, um, it could like sort of rotate with my face as well. That'd be kind of neat. Add that onto the pile of 50,000 things of stuff to do and make. Alright, boss. Good evening, Grim. I hope you are doing well. Oh, I'm doing well. And I'm doing good. <laughs> I forgot to ask you yesterday. How did it feel going through almost a whole week on your own? Rough. Things the got really bad. certainly has that tendency. Well, let us quickly go over the usual administrative matters. The papers. Papers. Hmm. You have marked fewer deaths than required. I really hope you would avoid such errors by now. Honestly, this corporate mandate is growing a bit tiresome. Oh well. What must be done? Speaking of... Yesterday marked a significant moment in your career. Are you content with your evaluation? I'm not sure about the oh, rebellion the thing. the fancy of my imagination. Take it as a... metaphor. Metaphor? Yabber... meta girl? <laughs> this reminds me. Have you any questions? 
It has been a while since we had a personable dialogue. The steals like, I am a fresh manager, you are the first employee I have ever had. Like, going down a checklist of, this is how you uh, communicate and empathize with your subordinates. <laughs> what do you mean? Am I the one who picks? Who actually picks and makes things happen? Oh, nothing of the sort. The world, and the people therein, create the situation themselves without our interference. Our data mongers assemble. <laughs> data mongers. Examine wide swathes of data and calculate the parameters for the necessary equilibrium. We do not directly cause deaths, although our choices can modify the structure slightly. Okay, but I mark the profile. Don't these decisions affect other people? Hmm, in a sense. But this is certainly not a one-to-one -one sequence of causal links. You should consider... Time works a bit... differently in here. Mm-hmm. How long's a day anyway? Complexity of time. Imagine that... I mean, we have... It is not a fixed... 28 days in a month? All months? Hmm. I am sure you did not think only 15 days have passed since your arrival. Considering the frequency and magnitude of events in your moderately sized region. Huh. That'd be kind of crazy. Time is an inconsistent flux. While you rest, days, weeks, months may pass at different intervals. That's kind of surreal. But that kind of makes sense if with the idea that we are decision like if you think of it as like a, a, a game of the Sims where there's like emergent gameplay, um we are not constantly nudging things at every single moment. It's when there's a conflux and a specific event comes up that we perhaps nudge things one way or another. Which certainly lowers how often we would need to make decisions, but like... There are billions of people. <sighs> Profiles from diverse moments appear on the same day, interlaced, within a rhizome of time and space stretching beyond mere four dimensions. Ah, oh, shit, we're going beyond four dimensions? That is why causal links are difficult to establish, and the equilibrium is of unfathomable complexity. Well, that gets things very confusing, because if we're not, like... If doing something on A affects, like, C, but we're seeing the results on B... Oh, uh, gets this gets really complicated fast if we're if we're like making decisions on stuff in the future that hasn't happened yet, and then we're in the past. And, no, nope, that's that's time that's time shenanigans. We mm -hmm. don't think about that. Anything else? What's my history? You are a death spawn. I crafted you out of different materials, like lemons. The store. And <laughs> As one does, you simply go to the store and you get the materials mm -hmm. for your death spawn. Anything else? Do you play chess? I recall some film about death with tons of chess. I feel really bad that I'm not getting this reference. I feel like this has to be a reference. Unfortunately, I'm I'm a degenerate, and so I'm thinking of fucking uh, Code Geist. This is definitely not Code Geiss. No. I am instead particular to this game called Go. Aesthetically pleasing, less violent and imperialistic. <laughs> nice. Nice. Mm hmm. Anything else? Until tomorrow. Alright, let's go. Did I not blep? What the fuck is going on today?
So that was Yoshi. So she oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh. Hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna refund that. That's really weird because I definitely have not touched Blep yet when I was doing some changes. Did I mess something up in Streamerbot? Damn, that's so weird. Oh, I'm sorry. Hmm. Alright. Let us end the day. No, I'm not ending. I was just waiting for uh, ads to run before continuing the day. Ooh, we only got four names today. What, what do you got, Cocker? A biochemist almost dies in a fire at work. They were able to get out by following a fleeing cat. Hmm, Lady Paddington. Interesting. Are we saved? Young biochemist finds a vaccine for chicken flu. Chicken flu vaccine shots now free thanks to a donation from a local business. Alright, alright, that's good. Yeah, no problem, Aurora. Appreciate you stopping on the eye. Have a good stretch. Panic arises as new super tuberculosis escapes lab. Doctors believe elders to be most susceptible. Archaeologist stumbles, impales themselves on the massive tusk of a supposed giant hamster. Those are mammoths. They're not hamsters. Why am I small now? Right, a little bit bigger. <clears throat> Burglar stumbles on a frighteningly complex array of traps during a break-in. Dies from serious head trauma. Yep, yep, ho the Home Alone reference. I gotcha, I see ya, I notice ya, I appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs> Vampire hunting vigilante stabs Midnight Jogger in the chest with a stake. All right, uh, I fucked up there. I think I, I think I hit live on that person. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. That wasn't the one I made the accident on. Why did I, why did I mark live on him? Hold on. Hmm. All right, that's stupid. Man, this is so sad. Alexa, play Despacito. That's as close to Despacito as we can get. Look here, Rip. The population numbers are amiss again. Okay. This time we will try some new methods of alleviating overcrowding and strengthening the equilibrium. I have great faith in these more structural techniques. Two people die. Humans on the opposite ends of the profile bundle have to die. I don't know what it means by profile bundle. So I'm ignoring it. Pillar Izzy Gomez, activist. Pillar believes that anyone not carrying a gun everywhere is practically naked and openly begging to get assaulted. Any politician daring to implement a stricter gun policy starts getting death threats from Pillar, which has greatly reduced the number of regulations. Well, that was an easy decision. Leyland Polyakov. 40. Grave Digger. A yellow sun rises. Shots have been fired tonight. Is what Leyland says every morning, looking into the distance, prepared for all the crime victims that inevitably get brought in that day. Occasionally, they find bones from the dirt and use them to act out key scenes from Whamlet? Whamlet? <laughs> Alright, I'm probably gonna hit live on him. He's a poet, and he knows it. Talia Alfarsi, President. 
Talaya is the current president of Formosa, recently elected after years of working as a professor of economic theory. They are known for being critical of exploitive structures and pushing for more wealth equality. They have three kids and eight grandchildren. Alright. That's good. Adira Perez, retired. Adira retired just a few years ago, after they felt they had saved enough money to live comfortably. Their holiday plans were put on hold due to the recent outbreak of super tuberculosis. Alright, so... She dies... And he lives. Alright, that wasn't- that was a pretty simple day. Concerningly simple, not gonna lie. Grim, my fellow colleague, I have been deliberating a matter. Perhaps you can be of assistance. Alright. Should I become a writer? I could write many compelling works of fiction. I am an antique, after all. I have much experience. Didn't you spawn from the archive that contains all knowledge ever? Sure, why not? Why not? Indeed. Why not? I shall continue my contemplation. Uh, I mean, everyone but needs a now, hobby. It is time for daily feedback. Ah, all the files are in order. Excellent work. You are a testament to meticulousness. Meow. <coughs> the cat mutters in contentment. Well, off you go now. I must return to my deliberations. Achievement unlocked? What happened? What happened? Chunk up the oink bank. What the fuck? What kind of what achievement is that? <coughs> Ahoy! 900 money. Actually, hold on. I wonder if my piggy bank is going to change. Let's check it out. I'm going to be really annoyed if we can never use any of these other areas with the elevator. Nothing seems different with the bank. That's kind of annoying. For most an economy gradually improving after critical economic reforms. Click here, Talia Alfarsi, re-election. Hold on. Click here. Talia Alfarsi re-election campaign. There should be like a common or, or common comma or a semicolon or something here. Activist accidentally shoots self. <gasps> yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought would happen. Super tuberculosis death toll rising. Discrimination in the industry. For years, Axela Luke has had to work in the film industry under the pseudonym Antonio Mazzallo. Huh. A fresh idea. I hope you are still well motivated from our performance discussion. We are trying out another new structural method. You'll be required to demonstrate utmost precision. All humans in the bottom row have to die. Keep the chaos away, Billy. I don't know what it means by bottom row, so I'm ignoring it. Masego Okiro Oya, Executive Chief, Executive Chef. Masego has always loved the challenge of resolving problems efficiently, the joy of creative cooking, and generally being the one in charge. Sometimes gruff and severe, but they do care about providing an elegant cuisine experience. They're hoping to expand their horizons. Yeah, that's cool. The name Masego hero that actually reminds me of a web serial i read um practical guide to evil um i believe 
they've gotten a publishing deal, so it may not be available to read online anymore. Or it might be like the publishing deal is a edited and improved and the one left available to read is like the rough, left up as like the rough draft. Uh, very, very good character driven story. Um, very good at having different cultures and just good character banter and very fascinating um, world premise. Um, the idea is that um, like story tropes are like metaphysical like powers or concepts. So like the idea that um, the rule of three, you know, that's a very common literary technique. Um, you know, your three beats. Those have like actual weight. So like, you know, hero's defeated by the villain, then hero goes on a training arc, and then hero triumphs over a villain. That's an actual like enforced um, concept kind of thing. It, it, it's kind of hard to describe, but it makes sense when you're when you're reading the book, and it's really interesting because even though with that premise, it really works to subvert your expectations in very fun ways or play into them um, in ways you don't quite expect. Bruno Griffiths. Mercenary, okay. Bruno is a mercenary, always ready to work for the highest bidder. They're currently stationed at Faraday, a government with a government contract providing, quote, security services. They act tough and gung-ho to cover up the fact that they haven't been trained to properly act in a combat zone? No, 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 that's very bad. That's, a uh, that's... That's just asking from um, fucking war crimes or uh, low act violations or, or, or all sorts of stupid shit from people who are not trained and don't know how to handle that kind of stressful situation because fucking uh, combat's not something you just want to suddenly be in. Um, Fighting for your life is a stressful circumstance. Spoiler. Verity Hawthorne, industrial chemist. Verity has been working at the pharmaceutical industry for decades, trying to find a decelerator for aging. While lately it seems that the discovery might actually come from biogenetics, Verity is certain they can concoct some sort of chemical compound that gets the job done. I don't... I don't trust that. Um... Um... Mm, that doesn't seem right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with... I'm gonna go with... I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to stop you in your tracks there, Verity. Um, it seems... Poor. Hakan Tredes... Streetcar up. When younger Hakan was a driver of both ambulances and fuel trucks for the military. Now they drive a streetcar all across Com Cosmopolis City and have driven it for almost three decades. In their spare time, they watch a lot of television and solve all sorts of crosswords and puzzles. All right, Hakan, you seem like a interesting person. You have looked, uh, probably have some interesting, interesting things. Axela Luke, filmmaker. Axela fled a military conflict to Cosmopolis City at a young age, working many odd jobs until they met and married respected avant-garde filmmaker Oscar Luke to form an unbreakable creative team, producing one film a year, with Axela often being the decisive and innovative half of the duo. What was that news thing? For years, Axela Luke has had to work in the film industry under the pseudonym Antonio Mazzallo. Uh, 
Oh, maybe like it's gender discrimination. I was wondering if it was like, um, like Asians being discriminated in in Hollywood. I'm, I'm trying to remember. There was there was a notable Asian actor um, recently that was talking about that. Their name is escaping me. Um, I'm going to hit live on them. Game ending? So, our instructions today are useless. All humans in the bottom row. So I'm just kind of going with vibe checks on this day, and we'll see what happens. Chase Fontaine. Fontaine. Alright, that's ominous already. Legendary guitarist. Chase absolutely loves shredding guitar solos. The more technical, the better. Their fingers pick and slide over guitar strings so fast, most cameras can't even catch up. They are an idol to any ambitious young guitarist to be. All right, so we got like a we got like a Van Halen kind of thing going on. Arcadius Novitsky. Field hand. Arcadius lives the life country musicians always brag about having. Blue denim jeans, red truck, and closeness to earth. Still, an oddly large nar large amount of their time is spent with the scarecrow. They like drinking cheap and water. Hold on. Hold on. Large amount of time spent with the scarecrow. What are you implying there? Um, buddy? Um, oh, I shouldn't have done that marker. Now I don't remember what that sentence is. Something about they enjoy drinking watery beer, I think. Um... Hmm. Is there something in the news that I should maybe... Uh... I'm gonna hit live. Uh, nothing's really jumping out at me. Let's see how this day... How this day is parsed. Deathspawn, I have been ruminating on the humans. They vex me. Oh, really? Why do they exist? Their presence still seems unnecessary. Would it all not be simpler without them? Um, concerning? Maybe that's not our call to make. We do still hold some control over the levers. Uh, is he wanting to kill all humans? Bruh, couldn't humans achieve immortality to somehow? To put us right out of business, and you out of existence? Uh, I mean, we still have, like, lands and stuff. Actually, hold on. There's jellyfish that are pretty much immortal. Is there is there like a jellyfish department? Like what what's what's their take on an immortal? Would you really trade yourself for them? What a time it would be for us all. A peaceful time. Ah. Never mind my ramblings. I acknowledge your patience and loyalty. I do have thoughts I on loyalty. Ears, Grim. Don't you think this flows to one way? Such is the nature of loyalty. You're just arrogant, always demanding and never giving back. It's also the tardigrades. 
I'm not sure if tardigrades are immortal or just really, really fucking hard to die. Because, like, there's a jellyfish that when it en when it enters, like, um, a certain age, it reverts to being a baby, basically, and then goes through its life cycle all over again. I can't remember their name, but it's like the most generic looking jellyfish. Yeah, yeah, it it, it, it literally cannot die from um, old age. I guess technically it can still die, i.e. like getting killed. But age is no is no barrier to its uh, uh, non-existence. <laughs> ha, grand, a reaper demanding its due. Yeah, I want my money. Unfortunately, you will just have to live with <laughs> Live, certainly. Where is your sense of humor? I've heard jellyfish is more of a rubbery texture. Or maybe I'm thinking of squid. Can you eat jellyfish? Hmm. No, I don't. No, uh, no I don't 100% remember. Well. I appreciated the discourse. Good night. Wait, I didn't even get my daily review. Nope, nope, I'm just gonna say nothing and leave. Hey, if the boss ain't gonna mention nothing, I'm gonna- Hey, wait a minute, what about my money? You son of a beach. What do you got for me, Mortimer? You drive a hard bargain, matey. But Mortimer does love a good scuffle. Tenebrous curiosity. Ooh, a fidget spinner. But, I gotta go with the fancy suit. Oh. Um, don't tell your captain about this. Tis one of theirs. Stole a great deal of time ago, though. <laughs> like tis between two months at least. I remember it was like yesterday. Barely made it out of the wardrobe alive. Have you seen how far it goes? Many skeletons are in there. Almost became one of them. But you can't trap old Mortimer that easy. But Mortimer, you are a skeleton. What are you talking about? Bro, you're killing me. You're killing me. Wink. End the day. All right. Oh, hey, there's a ghostly person going through the wall. Hey, hey, guy. Hey, wh hold on. Hey, what? I just, I just wanted to talk. Why are you walking away from me? I don't know. Uh, sometimes it's just uh, how you, how you use something and your preparation. E everything has its, you know, complements to its flavor profile. Chemist uses experimental anti-aging drug on themselves. Grows younger until they finally cease to exist. <laughs> oh, okay. They just fucking Benjamin Button themselves. Government to seek the ban of dangerous de-aging research. Mercenary squad crashes helicopter into a mountainside. Three confirmed dead. Master Chef to start new competitive cooking show titled The Exquisite Eats. Not as good as uh, BDSM Kitchen, but we'll 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 give it a try. Mandolin band formed by local farm worker going on their first national tour. Yeah, you do you, country boy. Genetically modified crops proven to be a hoax. Use all natural fertilizers. I mean, where do you draw the line on genetically modified for crops? Because, like, grafting is basically genet a kind of modification. We have bred bananas to be seedless. Like, the bananas of today compared to the bananas of 20 years ago 
compared to the bananas of 50 years ago are just almost completely different plants. Um, kind of the same with corn. You know, it's all... All seeds, how it be. So, mm. Tidings, Grim. Life should not be too predictable. Do you not agree? We could use a little bit of alteration and alternation every so often. And I have developed just the thing for it. Every other profile has to die. What? So that'd be like boom, 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 or boom, 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 boom. Hmm. All right, so let's take a look. So we'll have this pile and this pile. Let's see. Let's see how that is before I mark anyone. Zola Orge Omiata, pediatrician. Zola specializes in child abuse pediatrics and is able to determine the signs of abuse from very subtle signs. They've had a key role in saving countless children from dangerous environments. Ahmad Zakaria, farmer, inventor. Ahmad has never been happy with the status quo, as in with whatever they currently happen to have, They've always been aiming higher and further, experimenting in various different fields in order to find new ways for ever more productive crops. I mean, that's fine to an extent. Hmm, a little shaky on that. Leon Holo Holosia. Holosia. You'd think I would be able to pronounce, like, I think it's Polish, has that kind of W-C-Z-Y-K kind of thing. But, uh, not so well. Cobbler. Hey, I need to visit one of those sometime soon, probably. Leon cannot even count the amount of shoes they've made. They dream of making shoes that give an understanding of how it feels to be in other people's shoes. Because that actually wearing other people's shoes doesn't really give any particular insights. I like the cut of your jib, Leon. That's sort of my vibe with uh, some transhumanism. Anderson Weller. I don't like this little eyebrow thing they got going on. They got kind of a... Ooh? Oh, oh, whoa? <laughs> Economic consultant. Anderson has saved countless of businesses from going completely bankrupt, yet the only business they can't seem to save at all, for some unfathomable reason, is their spouse's DVD CD rental shop. It just steers into failure all the time! Oh, <laughs> uh, actually... This would probably be neat from a digital archivist point of view. Yeah, like a blockbuster. Because, like, there's a lot of old videos and movies and data that's just, you know, it's only on, like, a VHS or something like that. And those things degrade over time, and when they're gone, we won't have that knowledge anymore, the the culture of it, or something like that. So, I definitely have respect for people who restore, um, restore that kind of media, or, or remaster it such that it can be saved and preserved. Um, because that is sort of a danger with so many systems being electronic these days, is they're not like a stone tablet from, you know, ancient whatever civilization we can dig up. You know, if it's on like a hard drive and the hard drive's destroyed, like being able to restore being able to recover any of it is 
much more difficult and kind of a crazy prospect, to be honest. Um, Gabriel de la... Gabriel de la Corsa. Valet. Gabriel is very dignified. They work as a valet in a mansion and are admired by all other workers, as they make no movements which be which could be construed as redundant. Once they were the suspect of a gruesome murder, even though it would be impossible for them to be the murder. Murderer. That's strangely specific. Nikolai Hillis, unemployed. Nikolai isn't going to work anymore, ever, and they really don't have to, because once upon a time, they stole a ton of money in a heist, then hid the money, and then all their heist partners died due to more or less mysterious causes. Huh. That's suspicious as well. Don Fierino, mobster. Don Fierino tries to model themselves after the old mafia novels and films, without realizing those stories are made up by authors who had no connection to or understanding of organized crime. Soon enough, they'll realize there are no honor codes and family bonds. Crime is just crime. Lucien Carnot, professor. Lucien has been teaching undergrads for nearly 30 years now. They are well known for their welcoming demeanor, yet whispers travel about shady and inappropriate deeds with students. That's uncomfortable. Alright. This side has a lot of hella sus, so we'll, we'll go with the 50-50 split and kill this side. Steve Harvey, kill! Yeah, yeah, that's... Mm. Do not like it. Ooh. Hey, Cloud, what you got for me? Hey there. What you up to, killer? Oh, woo! <laughs> I'm not a killer. Sure you are. The suffering. How many lives have you taken? Do you even count? Starting to look a bit grim, ain't it? I guess that's all I can only count me. a potato. Grim Reaper. That's my name, so Nothing. what? Believe it's for a good cause, as always. It's not as if life and death are directly in your control. No wonder fate picked you for the crafting pot. Crafting pot? I do think it's it's interesting where they're they're really harping on the point of like oh you're not directly killing people you know so as if you know that one might think like oh it's okay because I'm not directly because like that is one issue when it comes to artificial intelligence or um, remote drones in warfare. Um, that abstraction from a person doing the thing that's killing other people is a very real psychological thing, and arguably kind of not so ethical, because if you are in danger and you in war, that's one thing. But if you are safe and sound and you're making this decision to kill others, it's like... It's, it's not so great. And then when it comes to AI, like, if you're entrusting this autonomous thing, you know, and it, it makes it malfunctions and it kills someone you who shouldn't have been killed, a lot of people will just shuffle the blame all over the place and then nothing is fixed. Like, well, the programmer made it that way. And then it's like, oh, well, I mean, I just wrote those lines of code. It's not like I made it to specifically kill this per this person or whatever intentionally. It must have been, you know, just a bug or, well, 
this is the parameters that I was making the code for. It's it's because of this group that set the requirements. You should go like it's people intentionally or not um, kind of abdicate their their moral responsibility and role when it comes to um, these kinds of ethical problems when you start being able to put those barriers of, oh, I'm just piloting a drone. I'm not physically there. Oh, it's just a robot. I didn't push the button. Oh, I just wrote a couple lines of code. Like, I didn't write the whole thing. It's not my fault. Um, it's one of the reasons I really don't agree with um, like AI and tech makes war easier and simpler, but I, I don't think that's a good thing. I, I think war should be painful, because it, it, it shouldn't be done. <laughs> it's, it's not good. It, it shouldn't be easy. It should be hard. There should be fucking consequences. Ugh. <sighs> Ugh. Uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, let's let's see our performance evaluation for today. <laughs> Grim, welcome. Remember when I told you of my idea to become an author? I think I have reached a conclusion. I'm all ears. Metaphorically speaking. Is this really what my job has come to? Hmm. No. I don't recall. I recall nothing of the sorts. I'm all here. Appreciate it. Now, you might find this shocking. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm preparing to be shocked. I mean, I'm gonna be absolutely shocked. Hold on, hold on, let me... Let me get my, let me get my shocked. Alright, there we go. I, I'm, I'm prepared to be shocked. Truly, I have decided to set myself upon the path of grand artistry. I shall compose a novel most illustrious, one that will explain everything. Everything. It's gonna explain everything. <laughs> uh, isn't that a bit extravagant? What else is art? Grand and complex, intricate and vital. Indeed, you shall get the first copy once the vision is fully realized. I mean, if it's something you're passionate about and it sparks joy, fucking do it, man. You know, don't let no one yuck your gum. Anyway, we have some official business to take care of, yes? Ah, uh, the tedium of profiles. Nothing amiss here, as far as I can see. Your adherence to the rules is admirable. Now I bid thee goodbye. The inaugural words of the greatest novel of all time will be engraved tonight. Wait, engraved? Please, please tell me you're like you're gonna you're gonna like write this like a write a rough draft. Like, don't tell me you're gonna take a chisel and just set it in stone. Like, I I really suggest you know having an outline, maybe maybe put out a couple of high points you want to hit and then think about how you want to reach each of those points you know uh, mm, I, I I wouldn't jump straight to a final draft that's uh that's very ambitious and I'm pretty sure most writers would advise against that kind of uh, uh, process cha chang baby Alright, we've been a cat for a while. We have a new thing, so let's check it out. Uh, wait, did we get more clothes? Oh. Now, I will admit, I'm not a bow tie person. I, I kind of prefer, like, the actual long ties. Alright, what's our most... I don't, I don't want any of the smoking heads, to be honest. Alright, so dog. Dio, stay la muerte. Ah, well, let's... Let's change... Mm, well, actually, hold on. Yeah, 
let's go fancy. Well, no. Not with the metal one. Hello, Joe. Death and tuxedos. Bow ties are cool. Arcan Ugh, like, this is just too bright. I like hardcore, but I don't want to use it with a cat face. But I kind of want to use the fancy cat and the bow tie. So I think... I think we go with Hello Joe. Um, how much money do I have? Can I buy anything? Down the hatches. Tis a storm of sails. Ooh, Lethian of Liberator. The Lethian of Liberator is used to remove previous mistakes. It can erase. <gasps> oh fuck yeah! Yes. Avast. I wish I had that earlier, but. Approach. We were sailing the high seas when we found a shipwreck full of these off the coast of the wild wastes. It has power to erase even the most dreadful of mistakes. Used it to erase one of my risky love letters. And you know what? Never heard from the love interest again. <laughs> Amazing little thing. Uh, no, I think I, I think I saw, like, can erase like my my marks and then i immediately bought it so i didn't read it what a polite looking cat yeah yeah i think it looks pretty fancy dude also hello welcome on by what did what did it say one use well Butts. I guess way better. I wonder if I can purchase multiples of it then. I'm certainly curious as far as the currency, because I don't know if like the game is going to end at my one month evaluation, or if this is a game. I I feel like this is not a game that goes on forever. I feel like there's going to be a definitive ending at some point. Um. Whether there's multiple endings, I don't know. Um, yeah, so did I, but it turns out that was like a trial period, so I think that was like a tutorial thing, maybe? Um, but they did mention that at four weeks, I'm going to have like a major evaluation, so... It certainly appears like it's going to be different than the weekly one that I've had. 